friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be using this super cute new set from Lawn Fawn called Dunna, and I'll also be using Mermaid for You. I'm starting out with my background today because it is going to take the longest to dry, so I thought I'd go ahead and get that done first. I'm using some distress inks to color my background, and I'm just using a piece of plain white cardstock. This is Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth. So first I'm taking the evergreen bow. This is like a nice blue-green color and I'm adding that in some dark patches on my cardstock. I want to have a really nice and vibrant background so I'm just going ahead and adding that on pretty heavy-handed. And I like to work in groups of three so I'm going to add that in three different places. Kind of almost creating like a zigzag pattern on the background. Next I'm going to go in with Salty Ocean and I'm just going to fill in all the white space but I'm also going to overlap some of the evergreen bow and try to create like a transition shade. The two together are going to give me some really nice deep places that are really going to help look like uh, the bottom of an ocean. Using this zigzag pattern also helps with not getting your fingers too inky because right up into the end I always have a little bit of white space to hold on to and um, once I run out of room I just go ahead and grab like a piece of paper. This is like a sheet of post-it paper and I can just hold that down over top to keep my hands clean and also to keep my fingerprints from pulling off some of the ink because sometimes that happens when you are putting a lot of ink down um, when you move your fingers you know it actually like takes away little spots and I didn't want to do that. So now that I have the uh, salty ocean laid down I'm going back with the evergreen bow and just deepening that color in just a couple little places I don't want to lose that nice lighter color so I'm kind of avoiding the light green there and just going around the edges to kind of just uh, deepen that up. And to add some darkness to the edges I decided to add in a third shade. This is Faded Jeans. This is a nice deep blue and I'm just going to go all around the edges there and just kind of um, create a really great contrast along the border. I am going in quite a bit because I'm going to die cut this panel down shorter so I want to carry that color in where you're actually going to be able to see it. And I'll just leave that center nice and bright and that will draw the focus there when we add our images over top so that it's kind of like highlighted. And now that I have the background how I want it, I'm going to take my Tim Holtz Distress Sprayer and just spritz some water over top. If you press um, in kind of short pumps, it gives you bigger drops. And if you press um, like normally, it gives you finer drops. So I'm doing a little bit of each so that I create this nice bubble effect on the background. And I just blot that up with a paper towel. I also took a mini mister filled with some perfect pearls diluted with water. And I just spritzed that over top as well to give it a teeny bit of shimmer. Then I'll set this panel aside to dry. I also need to create an ocean floor, so I've die cut another piece of cardstock with one of the Lawn Fawn Hillside Border dies. And now I'm going to take some antique linen distress ink and also some frayed burlap, and I'm just going to add some color to that until I have it looking nice and sandy. And then I'll just do the same thing, spritzing it with my Distress Sprayer and just blotting off the excess water. Moving on to our images, I've stamped them all in VersaFine Onyx Black ink and then sprinkled them with some clear embossing powder and heat set them. And now I'm going to do some watercoloring with my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens. So I've got my number two and number four round brushes from the Silver Black Velvet line and I have my little cup of water and so now I'm going to go in and start laying down my shadows on the shark. For that I'm using number 93 green gray. Then I'm going to take a shade lighter. This is the 91 light gray and I'm just going to blend that out using some little circular motions kind of um, making a transition shade between the two so that there's kind of like a medium and then when I bring the water in that's going to be my lightest shade it'll be the blended out shade so I'm just going to take that number four round and also begin to draw that out using a damp brush it's not too wet 
and I'm just working on the areas where the color is and then drawing that color into the open space where um, it'll fade off towards a kind of a lighter gray. I'll also use that 91 light gray to just add a little bit of shading right under the shark's belly. For the little fish, I'm going to use number 25 light pink and I'll just color half of it so that I have room to draw out that color a little bit and uh, make that kind of softer towards the front. For the five small fish, I'm using number 51 lemon yellow on their faces, just scribbling a little circle of color there. And then I'm going to go in with number 36 light blue for the remainder of their bodies. And when I blend these two together, it makes kind of like a neon green in the center and I just think it looks really cool. I'm going to be stamping out the seagrass and the coral from Mermaid For You and for that I'm using the Lawn Fawn ink colors Carrot, Plastic Flamingo, and Jalapeno. So I'm just going to ink those up really well and stamp those down firmly. And I am using the Bristol Smooth Surface Paper, which I apologize if I forgot to mention, I also stamped my images that I watercolored on that paper. It's my preferred paper to watercolor with the zigs. So I just decided to keep the paper consistent. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp out two of the seagrass, two of the pink coral, and then I'm going to grab one of the uh, kind of shorter, wider coral, and I'm going to stamp that in the carrot ink. Then I decided that I maybe needed a couple extra images for the uh, ocean floor. I put two small shells and a starfish uh, on a little block, and I'm going to stamp that down with some VersaFine Onyx Black ink, but first I wanted to prep my paper. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of clear embossing powder and just sprinkle that on and then I'll heat set those before I watercolor those in quickly. So the starfish I colored with number 82 purple. Again, just coloring kind of half of it and then using the extra space to blend that out. For the little clamshell, I used number 21 light carmine, just for kind of like a soft pinky pearly color. For the conch shell, I started out with 26 light pink and blended that out, but it wasn't getting to be the color that I wanted it, so I decided to add in a bit of number 52 bright yellow, which is actually kind of more of an orange shade, and um, the two combined gave me more of that kind of peachy, pale salmon color that I was looking for, especially once I blotted it off a bit. So for our background, I've die cut that now with the Lawn Fawn Stitch Rectangle Stackable since it's dry. I did that for both the background and the ocean floor. And then I'm just going to grab a bit of Tombow Mono Multi Glue and I'm going to glue that sandy bottom right down to the base. And I made sure to add my glue only to the bottom of that sandy hill so that I can tuck in my little seagrass and coral. And I'm just going to group those together into a little arrangement that's pleasing to the eye. Just basically two little groupings there, one on each side. I'll add this small orange coral over on the right kind of to just separate the two. You know, in nature, things are never exactly the same, so I wanted the two little groupings not to look identical, so that's why I have the, the third coral. Plus, odd numbers usually just balance things out. I'll add my last little pink coral there on the left, and this one I'm going to overlap on the sandy bottom so that it kind of creates a little bit more depth and dimension by having things at different uh, distances from the eye. And since I have less over on the left side, I'm going to balance that out by putting two of the shells, or the shell and the starfish, over on the left. And then over on the right side, where I have more coral and seagrass, I'm just going to add one seashell, so it kind of balances everything out. I'll add my shark on the left, right above the seagrass and the coral, high enough so that he doesn't scratch his little belly on the coral. And then I'm going to grab my little fish friend and I'm going to add him right across from the shark so they can be looking at each other. 
Before I add my five little fish, I want to add my sentiment so that I make sure to leave the room for it. So I'm going to ink that up with the deep sea ink. And it says, you're Jawsome, which I think is super funny and hilarious. And I went ahead and kind of stamped them at a bit of an angle just to keep with the playfulness of this card. And I did stamp those twice to give it a nice bold impression. Then I'm going to take the little bubbles that are also included in this set and I'm just going to stamp those out with the same ink here and there, kind of rotating the bubbles to get a different look so that the little bubble there is sometimes on top and sometimes on the bottom. Then there's also a little single bubble in that stamp set, so I'll grab that and stamp that a few times. Now that I have my sentiment and my bubbles where I want them, I can go ahead and add my little five fish. So I'm just adding the glue directly to the card. I find that's the easiest way with these tiny little uh, die cut images. And then I can just press those down into place right over top. And I discovered while I was adding these little fish, um, I thought they all only went one direction. But it turns out their eye is placed kind of right in the middle of their head so that they're easy to kind of turn the other direction and they look right. So I went ahead and flipped this other little guy so he could be next to the other fish. Now I've got my card base and it's made out of a piece of Lawn Fawn Blue Jay cardstock. I'm just going to add a piece of post-it paper to the top there. And I thought I would do a little stamping right around the perimeter of the card. So I've got those two bubble clusters again, and then also the little sentiment that says Donna. And I'm just going to keep kind of flipping that until I have that stamped all around the edge so that it just adds a little bit of something extra to the background of the card. This is totally a step that is unnecessary, but I just think it adds a little bit of whimsy to the card. So I'll just keep turning my block this way and that until I have everything filled in nicely. So because my card base is so dark, I'm going to be adding a liner, and that will be where I can write my message. It's also where I want to stamp the inside of my card. So I've taken the Fantastic Friends set from Lawn Fawn and just stamped out Best Fishes as well as Two Little Fish at the bottom corner. And I'm just going to glue that to the inside of my card. And I did cut that down to four inches by five and a quarter inches so that it would have a little bit of that blue border all the way around on the inside. So I'll just press that firmly into place. And then I can grab my focal panel. I've added some Scotch 3M foam tape to the back of that so I can pop that up for some added dimension. So I'll just peel off those backer sheets and then line that up in the center of my card. And once I have it straight, I'll just go ahead and press that down firmly into place. To finish things off, I've got these Pretty Pink Posh Clear Droplets. These are the 4 and 6 millimeter, And I'm going to take some multimedia matte from Ranger. And I'm just going to use that to add those in place. I find that this glue works really well for keeping kind of slippery things like sequins or these little droplets um, on your card, even through the mail. So I prefer to use this on any card that I may possibly be sending. So I'll just add a little dab underneath each of these, and then I decided that I needed one more at the top, so I just went back and added that in. And um, these are going to look milky underneath right now while the glue is wet, but it will dry completely clear and matte, so you won't be able to see that at all on the finished card. And that is going to complete our card for today. There's a peek at the inside once again. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. That lets me know that you um, are interested in seeing more videos like this in the future. Here's a couple extra videos that may interest you. You can click on those by just clicking on the little video clip there. And you can also click on my photo if you'd like to subscribe to my channel. If you haven't done that already, I invite you to do so. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.